Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great Sunday morning and a, uh, I guess, remorseful or reflective Memorial Day weekend. Um, I know some people accidentally or incorrectly say Happy Memorial Day. In a way, I guess Memorial Day could be happy because we're happy uh, to be alive, happy to have this wonderful freedom we have, though at a cost. So, though I don't think it's necessarily a insult, it is, though, just kind of not the best terminology to say Happy Memorial Day, I guess. But I do understand the sentiment. But we're not here for that. We're here to talk about Warhammer Age of Sigmar's Dominion Unboxing. Now, I did a Twitch stream impromptu yesterday and got uh, migraine, got started choking on stuff, so we had to, we had to call it. But we're going to go ahead and review it today because this stuff is looking pretty gosh darn uh, smart or sharp. Well, I guess smartly dressed and sharp. So after that, I've got a uh, podcast I want you guys to check out, but we'll get into that in just a moment. So here we, we're going to start off with Yendrasta, the Celestial Spear. She is one of a few, basically these big angel type uh, monster hunters or go-to man or woman or go-to people that Sigmar has around. There's more than just one. This is just one that we're going to be seeing right now. I don't know if we'll see any others later on down the line. And quite frankly, to have one of these godlike creatures, uh, Stormcast, to come down from the heavens, so to speak, sent by Sigmar is pretty awesome. And that's going to, I think she's going to be tearing up the battlefield. From what I understand, and you guys all probably have seen it or have watched the uh, the Warhammer Fest or read up a little bit about her. She's a big time monster hunter. And there's a lot of monsters running around right now in the mortal realms. So it, we're kind of excited to see her popping up. She's got a lot of great aesthetics. And, and I know a couple people that play Warhammer fan. Uh, not Warhammer Fantasy, but Warhammer 40,000 are already eyeballing her to be a better Celestine model, Saint Celestine. So who knows? People might snag her up just for that. She's definitely well sculpted. I, I'm really, let's see if we can zoom in. I mean, they do, there we go, a lot of great detail on her armor. The wings look really good. Everything about this model is just it's really exquisite. Still wielding these um, <laughs> hand and a half and two handed weapons as dual wield, which I still don't understand. I mean, it's very impractical. I mean, dual wielding in itself is only really practical if you've got um, short, two short weapons or kind of a medium, like a say a, a rapier and a dagger. But wielding a bastard sword and a spear two handed, a little impractical, but. We're not here to talk about that. Let's move on to the Lord Impertinent with his Grip Hound. So he's a big time leader. If you watch the video that they have on the Warhammer community page, he is front and center and you see him at like pretty much age as you know he's battling it out, going from his younger self to his old man, you know, old man, Lord and Impertinent. So just a new type. Uh, I, I doubt that this guy is actually a named character because he doesn't have like a name there. But it's a new type of HQ or uh, leader type, which is really weird. I mean, Stormcast have got a lot of leaders and it seems a little ridiculous. I think GW needs to calm down a little bit on the <laughs> on the Stormcast Eternals and their, um, their leaders. But um, he is the main character who's narrowly, uh, yeah, exactly. He, he's the guy that uh, narrates the cinematic trailer and is very good Griffhound Ironbeak. Um, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. But we're going <laughs> to, I'm personally not too thrilled about this model. He just, he's kind of like a generic leader type, but they still manage to look awesome. And I like that they've changed up a little bit of the armor style too. It's very nice. A um, little mixture of um, different uh, ancient Earth-like armor. Um, still, once again, uh, two big weapons that are not ideal for uh, dual wielding. But hey, whatever, whatever. He's also a caster, I believe. So that's probably why he has that big rod. Uh, speaking of casters, let's take a look at the Knight Arcanum. I have to say, I'm tickled pink with this character. 
normally, you know, spellcasters, psychers, all that sort of thing doesn't really tickle my fancy, but this one, and I think really what sells it is from the uh, the waist up that the the torso looks really awesome, and then the mask or the helmet that she's wearing, I think it looks really really awesome. I'm 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 excited about this model. This is a very cool model. Um, looks like she's just the main spellcaster, and I already said that there's a lot of characters in this box and so far we're at three characters and we've got one more to go so let's take a look at this next character i think it's this next miniature yes it is so it's a new knight vexilor or a new vexilor for the stormcast eternals and this is probably the one of my favorite models um actually right now as of right now out of the four we've seen this is my favorite model mainly because it is so i don't know i want to say stoic I mean, this model looks, this is the, like the perfect pose, except I don't know why um, the banner shaft or haft, whatever it's called, pole, uh, looks like it's misaligned. You would think that they would catch that, or maybe it's a, a bad picture, I don't know, but it looks like it doesn't line up, and that's like, come on, Games Workshop, you, you, you guys didn't catch that? <laughs> But, you know, you guys, if you're not aware, I, I will critique Games Workshop. Even though I'm a fanboy, I don't give them a free pass. I will criticize them. So, if you're wondering why I'm praising them and tearing them apart, it's because I hold them accountable. They are the big boy in the block, and they should not be having mistakes. So, th but anyways, I like the pose of this model. Normally, those kind of static poses... Um, the, where it's just kind of framed from the from one side kind of are irritating to me. But in this case, even though he's standing, you know, just well, like he is, um, the direction that his head is looking and his arms are bent and then the direction that the banner is flowing actually gives this model more than just a 2D. If you guys remember, Warhammer um, 40,000 used to have these old uh, 2D models like Karn and a bunch of Space Marine captains, Arimon and all them, and they were like static poses and there was no, uh, they weren't dynamic and I, it was just something that really irritated me <laughs> to still to this day, but this character kind of has that pose, but with just some simple arm bending and then having the, the the banner going the way it is, it doesn't look like it's a static pose. I mean, he is um, holding his banner. He's about ready to stab somebody with his big old giant sword. And he's holding that massive, massive banner just flapping in the wind. So, and you know, it's got to be windy because uh, that's a thick banner. That banner is a thick boy. And then it's got all the little metal clamps on it. So if it's blown in the wind, you know, that wind is pretty strong. Anyways, I thought the, it was a very cool model. Don't know if I would ever use them in the, in the game, but he is definitely a cool model. So I'm going to put something, I'm going to add another thing. I wanted to cover the Praetors. The Praetors are going to be a new bodyguard for the Stormcast Eternal um, characters. So there's three models in this box. They all look pretty gosh darn good. Uh, I imagine they're going to have some, um, and you guys can correct me, maybe some sort of, I forget what it's called for, I don't know if there's an invulnerable type save, but um, I imagine they're going to have some sort of magical save and then a high high um, normal armor save versus whatever you know type of harm. Um but they're probably just going to also have lots of high-end attacks, high bravery. Uh, they're going to dish out a lot of damage, probably be able to interrupt combat. I'm just, I'm really basing a lot of this off of 40k, but probably be able to interrupt combat, like intercept. Oh, you want to attack my boss? No, no, no. I'm his bodyguard. Here, you can hit me instead. I think we might be seeing that, which would be cool. They are a bodyguard. We're going to keep using this page right now because um, this is just how Games Workshop set up their page. The Annihilators are these big boys. And by big boys, I mean they are big boys. These are, looks like they're on 40, possibly, I mean, they might be 50 millimeter bases. 
And big old fat hammer, fat shield, fat armor, fat legs, fat arms, big old fat head. These guys are some thick boys. I'm really hoping when they do uh, roll out for um, the regular box, not the push fit that comes out of the Dominion uh, box, that there's a little bit more dynamic posing. I would love to see one or two of the models have a kind of um, maybe one that's charging forward. Some I want to see what there's just something about this these massive boys and their forward momentum has got to be devastating just thinking about that like the juggernaut from marvel comics um and then another one swinging because you can just feel the weight I, I feel like if they're swinging that hammer or they're cock got it cocked back that i mean it's i just feel like that is going to really capture the strength and power of these models uh, i'm hoping games workshop will do that and not just go with these kind of very basic poses i think uh two dynamic poses in the box which will probably be a three-man box i think that would be really ideal moving on we have the new rank and file i think they're called the vindicator vindicor vindicor vindic vindictor vindictors vindictors haha uh basically spearmen spear women it looks like you're getting five men and five women uh which is really cool because i might try to do some trading with a lot of people and see if i can secure as many of the female stormcast um vind vindictors as possible i'm not gonna go through all of them but they do look good i like the even though it's supposed to be chain mail right here it kind of looks like scale mail but i do like the what they've done they've cleaned up the armor i'm not a big fan of stormcast uh eternals armor right now but for some reason this looks good Maybe it's because they're just kind of breaking it up with that bit of chainmail uh, slipping through. So I'm really um, encouraged with these models. These are pretty guys darn cool. All right, so let's get into the Cruel Boys. Now, the Cruel Boys, um, my prediction was they were going to be orcs. Um, and then I was like, oh, they might be hobgoblins. But I was going with a, new, with a, a type of orc. Um, maybe a bit technologically advanced orc. And in a way, they kind of are, but not... I was a little wrong, but we were still right. One, <laughs> but one thing that kind of drives me, or not drives me crazy, but if you're not familiar with the Lord of the Rings movies or the Lord of the Rings battle game, or sorry, it's, I think it's called Middle Earth uh, Battle Strategy Game. Now, there's a lot of aesthetics that they pulled from those goblins and orcs and urukai, which, you know, it, it's hard to not be inspired by that sort of thing. But it still is like, I, I feel like they could have avoided it. They could have avoided it. But these are orcs, or sorry, orooks, orooks, O-R-R-U-K. If you're not familiar, these are, it's just Games Workshop has been going through a renaming of all their all their um, properties, especially with Age of Sigmar. Uh, part of the reason why is everybody out there, every fantasy game out there has elves. They have... Um, uh, orcs or whatever and giants and stuff so what do you do to correct that well yeah you, you give them new names like elf but spelled with an a orcs are now orooks o-r-r-u-k that sort of thing um, I, I, it's not everything but it's basically so they could trademark it just like they did with all their paints you don't think that they were like oh let's uh, you know, um, let's just rename this ultramarine blue to mccraig blue because you know we just want to have a fancy name. No, they wanted to secure uh, a trademark on that because everybody can have anybody can have an ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue is a color. It's actually the name of a color. So, which ultramarine blue do you go with? The one from um, Monument Hobbies, or from Reaper, or from Citadel? That's pretty much why they were doing. They they're securing it, and I, I'm not criticizing that. It's very very brilliant marketing. So we got these new Oruks or Oruks called the Cruel Boys. This is a new faction and it is a new race. I like, I, I sit here and looked at the miniatures and I was even saying during the stream yesterday that these guys are like CrossFit orcs. They're slimmer. They're more fit. They got more practical muscle, whatever it is. CrossFit, CrossFit. People like to say these are CrossFit orcs or CrossFits. Orcs. I think that's what we might do. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so we've got this gentleman right here. Let me 
pull my uh, screen back out here so we can get all the naming right because I want to get it right. So Killaboss on a great Nash tooth. Um, it's kind of like a giant na naked mole rat or badger or something. They call it a bog hound, but uh, I mean that tail, the skinless body, I don't know. But I mean, this he still looks good. I have a feeling that this army is going to be uh, have a high AP, probably low damage. They even might have a special rule for bleed because I see a lot of excuse me serrated edges on a lot of these weapons. So I don't know if there's a bleed function. There might be. Um, there might be some random, um, a lot of random uh, damage out there. I think though they're going to have a low damage output, high attacks, and high AP. I think that's we're going to see a lot of high AP weapons. They have a lot of piercing uh, uh, weapons out there. And if you watch the cinematic trailer, they do some piercing. A lot of piercing. All right, moving on. So we also have, I mean, what what orc tribe or Oruk tribe would be, um, what, what would you be without a caster of some sort? This is the Swamp Kala Shaman, like Swamp Collar, uh, and a Pot Grot. A lot of people seem to like the pot grot. Eh, the pot grot is okay. What I like is this shaman. Let's take a, a zoom in. He is a very wicked, badass looking shaman. I'm not going to lie. He's got the hand of Gork, or is it Mork? I think it's the hand of Mork on his staff. Looking pretty snazzy. All of his little dangle jing, jingle jangles um, and <laughs> fetishes and charms uh, dangling from his body. And I love that he's pouring out a liquid, and the liquid is turning into some sort of, of um, uh, mist or an aerosol, basically. And for, from what they kind of told us is that this guy, yeah, they're spellcasters, but they're really potion makers. So they're probably going to be doing lots of buffs to units. The other thing I liked is the fact that this guy on his back has got a mega gargant um, part of the, the, the skull as a as a back piece of armor i think it looks really awesome and it's such an ingenious thing for them to put on and i like i mean it's got all these spikes coming out of the top of it that's really i think to hold it in place but games workshop was thinking ahead and there's little there, he's got little straps and stuff on there to help um yeah obviously keep it tied down which that's an attention to detail that i can uh, really really appreciate so I think this is that's a really cool model. I'm looking forward to seeing more of what um, is going to be coming out about it. I'd like to see what kind of spell casting is going to have. Is it going to be a new type of magic? Well, it'll be new spells. So it's going to be interesting to see what he can do. Uh, next up, we've got the Killaboss, another Killaboss, but this one's on foot with a stab grot. All right, so let's first take a look at the Killaboss. I'm going to just zoom in. So once again, lots of piercing weapons, guys. Lots of piercing weapons. So there's probably going to be a, a lot of a, at least minus one armor piercing. Or I think they call it rend. I'm sorry, rend. Rending weapons. Um, I'm sure some of you are screaming at me now. It's rend. Okay, it's rend. Easy. So <laughs> um, he's got lots of pointies. And still, once again, it still looks like goblins from the Lord of the Rings battle game. Or sorry, the Middle Earth battle strategy game. Anyways, I dig the model. He looks big, brutal. He's definitely been doing his CrossFit, CrossFit uh, workouts and a lot of practical muscle there. Very slim line. I'm really digging it. Not a lot of armor, but we'll see how that, that reflects. I like he's standing on the, um, he's not a Space Marine Lieutenant, but <laughs> it's a Space Marine Lieutenant. Now, I wanted to focus on the Stab Grot. The Stab Grot tickled my fancy. He is just such a cool grot. Such a cool, such a cool model. I mean, he's got his shield. I mean, it's like about a medium-sized shield, and it looks like it's a pauldron um, from one of these guys right here. Um, look at well, yeah, looking at the his pauldron here on the right arm, and that they're about the same size. And this guy basically why the um, why the killer boss is fighting somebody's stab grot just kind of goes up and just practices his stabbing. I think that's a really cool model. It, it's one that tickled my fancy the most. Uh, you can swap out the shield for another, um, looks like a spiked ma or a ball and chain. I'm not sure how effective it will be. I'm, I don't know. 
I think I'd rather have the shield, but that's me. So moving on, of course, we're going to have a banner bearer. Now, these are a little bit different banner bearers. Uh, the Merc Knob with Belcha Banner. So what they said in, in the video is that these guys go out and hunt down this nasty creature in the swamp. And they take its tongue before they go into battle and they mount it on this uh, or in the banner and it leaks out this noxious gas. So besides probably boosting up some morale, I think this is going to be an offensive banner that will anybody within probably say, let's just say 12 inches is minus one to hit at the very least. I would say minus one to hit. Um, it's going to cause some difficulties and maybe even minus one to ranged weapons too. I don't know. I, I think they, a lot, you know, if it is noxious gas coming out, is it an invisible noxious gas? Is it a visible one? I think, excuse me, we'll, we'll see that, uh, coming into, um, effect. So we're going to bring back this other, um, window real quick here. Cause we've got a bunch of, of other images so the skewer boys i still i couldn't find it but there is a type of crossbow basically it's like in between being a light ballista and a um a heavy crossbow um a friend of mine can pro i should have reached out to him it was a massive crossbow massive like probably about four and a half to five feet tall i mean if you put it um uh, top to bottom and you had this big massive plate that you would um, brace yourself with or brace it against and it was there's no hand crank I mean you had to sit there and use all your might you know using leverage and everything to to load it and to fire it and that's what these guys are they're basically light ballistas the what do they call them again the man skewer bolt boys love the name really awesome name these guys are basically carrying light ballistas look at the size of those uh, crossbow crossbow boats if you look over um at the at the back of his left heel you can see how long those quivers are or how big those quivers are so that is a pretty massive bolt that's not a crossbow that's a light ballista i don't care what they say that's not a crossbow those are light ballistas yeah see right here behind his left uh, heel that's not a crossbow bolt guys that's a freaking ballista bolt I mean, those are practically spears, short spears that they're, that they're flinging. Um, anyways, lots of stabby bits everywhere. These guys love their stabby bits. They are looking really awesome. I think these are going to be really cool. I think um, it's one of the things that orcs lacked on was ranged weaponry. Now they're going to get it. They're going to get some really solid ranged weapons. Let's get to the gut rippers. Um, once again, and we're, this is where we're really going to see it. These guys are definitely CrossFit orcs. I am I am 100% certain that we are looking at CrossFit orcs here. Um, that, look how lean they are. I mean, and it's all muscle. There's no fat there. They got those long gangly arms. I mean, they probably do a lot of parkour. Um, as Texas Wargamer had put it, these are CrossFits fit with a Z instead of an S orcs. They are. Or sorry, Oruks. And I'm digging it. I'm really digging it. These guys are very menacing looking. And I'm actually more... I think these guys are more menacing looking than the Iron Jaws. The Iron Jaws are not as terrifying looking. These guys look intimidating. And they look vicious. And I mean, look at all the serrated edges, man. I'm telling you. This is going to be a da very deadly army. And then we've got their Hobgoblins. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, the hob gobs, uh, hob grot, uh, slittas, slit tuz. And they're going to have little grenades, lots of stabby, lots of stabby, uh, knives. I imagine they're going to have some sort of infiltration ability. Uh, but they are going to, they're not, I don't think they'll be your big rank and file, but I think, uh, uh, you'll see a small, depending on the rules, you'll see at least probably one small group group in the army. They're probably going to be really cheap. And they're going to be effective at disrupting the backfield of your opponent. Um, but I don't think they're going to be definitely be frontline troops. Okay, moving on. Let's take a look at, let me pull this window back out. This is all live right before I go uh, head out of town here. So there's no editing. So we're going to have, a, I mean, of course, just like with 
Space Marines, there's always going to be new Stormcast models. And even though we just got new Stormcast models, we're getting even more new Stormcast models. So we have the Knight Judicator with Griffhound. So it looks like it's just going to be one model with basically a ballista, a light ballista. Because that's not a normal arrow, dudes. And that's not a normal bow. That's like, I mean, because remember, the Stormcast Eternals are bigger than regular humans. They're basically Space Marines. Yeah, I know. Sigmarines. I know. We've been hearing that for like five, six years now. The joke's over. <laughs> but those are massive, massive longbows. Um, probably another good two feet bigger than a regular longbow. Maybe even a little I'm going to go with two feet. That seems about right. And those those arrow shafts are way longer than a regular arrow shaft. So that's basically a light ballista also. And he's going to get some grip hounds probably to hunt. Now, I imagine that you know there's going to be unit cohesion. So he's going to be good to have out there maybe for sniping, uh, so to speak. And then he's going to have the grip hounds that will be nearby to protect him. Now, if they're able to break away from him and engage or harass the enemy... That'll be cool. But if it follows most Games Workshop rules, they'll have to stay close to them, which is not a big deal. I just think it's cool that they've got these awesome charging dynamic poses. These guys look very, very intimidating. Uh, next up, if you guys did not see it, is going to be the Stormstrike Chariot. Now, I haven't seen chariots in a, quite a while. And so it's interesting that they're, they brought back a chariot, let alone a chariot for Stormcast Eternals. Um, I, I feel like... You know, when I saw this, that is like, man, you guys are, especially in the, uh, storm, the uh, what do they call it, the Knight Judicator. Uh, it feels like they're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. And it's like, whoa, man, we need some more models to come out with our Stormcast guys because we don't have enough Stormcast units out there. I think there's more Stormcast Eternal unit types out there than there are Primera Space Marine unit types. It might be pretty gosh darn close. Hmm. Anyways, I thought it was just a, uh, feels like it's unnecessary. They've got enough, but they still got to have stuff come out. So why not a, uh, a chariot with a guy with an ax and a guy with a big old giant bow? Uh, I don't know how effective it's going to be. To be honest with you, I just, I just don't see a lot of chariots being used in the game. So it's just a weird... This is a weird one for me. I, I mean, I really don't have even a lot to say to it, so I'm going to skip this. You guys can scream at me, oh, well, chariots, blah, 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 blah. And I'll be like, oh, I should have paid attention to you guys instead of thinking blah, 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 blah. All right, so <laughs> we're almost done here. We have the Beast Skewer Kill Bow. Now, this is a ballista. This would be a full-scale ballista, not a light ballista. This is a big boy gun. Well, gun. Um, and it's... I would say it's going to do a hell of a lot of damage to monsters and it will do damage to rank and file as it, it'll probably do like D six wounds or maybe on a six it'll do, it does like additional mortal wounds because it is serrated. It is um, ar very likely going to be armor piercing. So I think it's going to be a definitely a devastating bow. You do not want to get or a crossbow or sorry, kill bow. You don't want to get hit with it. I do like some of the things that they've done here. Some of the attention detail. They got the, the grot here cranking it back to be able to fire it while the uh, while the cruel boys is bracing it. I love they've got the brace um, or the uh, the the basically the shooting stand. For this kill bow, they got it bolted into the rock. I think that's a really awesome detail. That tells you how um, powerful this is, and I love that they've got instead of the normal, um, the normal, I guess, uh, bowstring or ballista string or whatever. They've got it. It's a four point, so there's going to be a lot of torque. I think torque's the the right word. There's going to be a lot of power behind that bolt. Uh, flying off into the ranks. I think that's going to be very, very devastating just by the inclusion of another, another, basically another bow, um, another, I don't even know what the terminology is. You bow guys out there can scream and <laughs> furiously put it in the chat. And I do super appreciate you guys' comments. So at any rate, 
that is going to be a devastating attack. And let's get into the last one. I thought this was just going to be a monster until I read the description. This is a break of boss on a Mire Brute Trogoth. That is a mouthful for saying, hey, here's another HQ choice. And instead of running around on like a four-legged critter, we're just going to go put him on a giant Trogoth. And he's not, I mean, he's not like a normal troll. He's like a big boy troll. Like, um, well, he's a big Trogoth. Uh, I mean, he's got a, like a goading stick. I'm, I, it looks to me like a goading stick. And it's got a strap to it. So I wonder if there's some magic um, induced with it. Because see, you got the strap down below uh, coming off the bottom of the shaft. And then he's got the, like a little, elect to me, it looks like electrodes. Like I said, these guys look a little bit more technologically advanced um, until you get to like the, the bone um, harness. But man, is this guy scary looking. I mean, I, we're just going to start at the bottom and work our way up. It's a that's not a normal tra, uh, trogoth. Uh, this is like in between the the bigger trogoths. I, I forget what they're called and the little ones. And then you got a, a full grown cruel boy riding the back of him. That's awesome. What a brilliant idea. What a brilliant idea. Man, that's going to be devastating. This guy this guy's going to dish out some damage in close combat. But yeah, he's a, a breaker boss. Um, and he, he, he's not like a like a rent herder or anything like that. He's a he's basically a, a, an HQ choice and he's going to dish out a lot of damage. Well, I don't know if he'll dish it out, but I imagine the Trogoth that he's controlling is. I mean, two massive uh, close combat weapons and uh, probably a lot of health and healing. Watch out, boys and girls. So right now, the Dominion box is scheduled to go on pre-order in June. Even though they didn't say there's limited quantities, this is a launch box. So that's their way of saying it's limited, but it's not limited because they don't want to use that terminology. So just like Indominus, if you remember the drama for the Indominus box, there's going to be limited quantities and then they're going to be gone. Now, they might do what they did with, since they did drop the ball at the Indominus is allow a brief window of made to order and you'll get it like 121 days after its release. My suggestion to you is go ahead and secure yourself one box and find a buddy that wants a box as well and both of you buy a box and then you split the contents. That way you can double up. And then if you want to swap around some of those extras, you swap around those extras. But at the very least, secure yourself a box before you do anything else. Okay? So I want to highlight a friend of mine. He is a tournament player. He actually went 5-3 and three at uh, the Dallas Open, which doesn't sound great. But he went 5-3 and three with uh, Gene Steeler Colts, which are a notoriously underpowered and difficult army. And he's actually done very well in his rankings against top players. And he is a very skilled player. I don't want to give his last name, but I will give his first name, Eric. And he started up a podcast. He's on the FM Pro team, by the way. He started up a, a podcast, and he's put it up on YouTube. And I want to highlight it here, Brood Brothers Broadcasting. And now you might not be a Gene Stiller cult fan, or a uh, that might not be your go-to army. But just like I mentioned with Tizkin uh, podcasting the other day, they give out lots of great tips. And if you're not picking up a tip on how to use Gene Stiller cults, because you're not a big fan of Gene Stiller cults, you don't use them. But all the other tips about playing in these majors, the super majors, the GTs, is going to be extremely helpful for you. Whether you're just a weekend warrior and you just go play your games at home, like the vast majority of Warhammer 40,000 players I found out, vast majority of Warhammer 40,000 players or any tabletop gamers, they actually play at home versus stores. And there's more people playing at stores casually than there are tournament players. Tournament, <laughs> But no matter what you do, the the information coming out of these players, these top players um, in, in the world, really, for playing Warhammer 40K or Age of Sigmar, those, those tactics 
bleed over into regular play because you guys are both competing. It's just one's traveling to play compete against 205 or six people. You are just playing Todd and Brenda and little Timmy at your local store. There's a big difference in the, the type of people you're playing, but the strategy and the tactics, that doesn't change. So one thing that I, mean, I was just discussing this with them yesterday, um, ninth edition and with the, the changes coming out for the chapter approved next weekend, there's a lot of um, a lot of tactics and, and choices in your uh, strategy planning on what type of secondary missions you're gonna be taking um, just like I said, whether you're playing a casual game or you're playing in a tournament, whether it's a local tournament, GT, major, super major. I don't know if there's anything now above a super major. I don't think so. Super major is like one of the newer things, but the tactics remain the same. You're still competing to uh, against another opponent. You're still trying to win. And uh, unless you're teaching somebody, that's different. That might be a little different. But the, still, the point is that you can still learn. And um, this gentleman is a um, uh, big into physics, big into the math, the mathematics. And he does a great job of breaking it down, even dummy level, like for me, to where I can understand. Oh, OK, so if I want to maximize points by the end of the game, um, I need to really be paying attention to this type of secondaries. Um, if it's at a GT, this type of secondaries, if it's at a, a regular weekend, this one for super majors and whatnot, and which ones I'm good for my army at achieving. So long story short, do me a solid. Head over to Brood Brothers Broadcasting. Um, jump on probably his latest video, the Dallas Open, episode seven. Uh, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let them know that you came over from Havoc Maker Studio and or uh, over here on youtube and go ahead and hit the subscribe button it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe but it does help us out and i'm hoping uh, we'll get some re reciprocity but i would like to support people that are out there championing the hobby in their own fashion is a absolutely amazing thing and um eric is a brilliant strategist brilliant when it comes to uh, warmer 40k and it shows when he's able to do really really exceptionally well with an underperforming army that that shows you the the type of person that you are dealing with the, the quality of his understanding of the game tactics and strategy so please jump over there i'll put a link in the description below and also make sure you hit that subscribe button here on fmp wargamers or jump over to havoc maker studio Depending on which channel you're on, that link will be in the description. I super appreciate it. You guys have yourself a wonderful weekend. And I will talk to you probably sometime next week. We should have a couple videos next week. I'm going to be out of town, but I still plan on doing some videos. Talk to you all later.